All right, problem four, we got this function. f of x equals six over one plus x squared, and r is this shaded region here. So find the area of r. All right, so the area of r is just going to be basically the integral from this point to this point. Let's first set that up. And that'll be negative one. One, well, let me show you how, like we can um, find that f of x is, you know, so f of x is this whole guy. And then this point, we know y is three because this line right here is y equals three. So we want to find where does f of x equal three. So let's set three equal to six over one plus x squared. And then basically six over two is going to be three. So then one plus x squared equals two. So then we know x squared had to be one or negative one. So then let's, let's just write these points as one, three, and then negative one, three. Okay, so the integral will be essentially, let's integrating um, the function f, if you integrate the function f from negative one to one, you would get this entire rectangle and that shaded region. But we only want this top part. So what we're gonna do is integrate f of x minus g of x, or sorry, min minus this line three. So f of x minus the line three, f of x is six over one plus x squared dx. So we integrate this to find what r is. Let's factor out that six from there. Now, what we're gonna be left here is um, just one over one plus x squared. And you have to know this um, antiderivative of the inverse tangent of x. That's pretty much the only inverse tangent you really have to know the derivative of. But the derivative of the inverse tangent function is one over one plus x squared. And that will just be minus three x. Then we're gonna integrate from negative one to one. Let's evaluate this. So we get six times the tangent of tangent inverse of one. The tan inverse of one, you know, make sure you know your trig, and that's gonna be at pi over four. Because that's where the sine and cosine are both equal to equal to each other. Minus three times one. This thing minus six times the inverse tangent of negative one. And that's when the tangent, and that's when the cosine and sine function are opposites. And remember, the inverse tangent function is restricted to the negative pi over two and pi over two domain. So then this will be negative pi over four. Minus three times negative one. So six pi over two minus, a, or plus six pi over two, so 12, no, six pi over four plus six pi over four. So 12 pi over four. Minus three minus uh, three again, minus a positive three, right? So minus three minus six. Simplifying, we get three pi minus six as our answer. All right, part B. Write, but do not evaluate an integral expression for the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the horizontal line, Y equals seven. Okay, so this is that volume of revolution. Let me write it out. Um, the volume of the solid revolution, where you take pi times the integral from A to B. And if it's a solid revolution with the hole in it, um, remember it's gonna be large R of X squared minus small R of X squared. So going back to the, um, the graph here, we're rotating about the line y equals seven. Whoops, the line y equals seven. Let's draw a horizontal line y equals seven up here. So we're gonna rotate about this line. So we wanna find what's the large radius. 
So the large radius being again from the distance from here to what you're rotating. So the outer radius will be this line y equals three. So large radius will be the distance from here to here. That'll be your large r of x. And that's always equal to four. It's always the same, because that's a horizontal line. And same thing on this side, it's always equal to four. Now the small radius will be the distance from this line to this graph, this point right here, this will be the small r. Now that changes, as you can see, throughout you know this interval. And the way it changes is that this line, this line segment, how do you get that? Well, what you do is you take seven and you subtract, let me actually grab a different color pen. To get this small r, you take seven, remember seven is this total value from here to here, seven minus this small value or this value here. So small r is seven minus this, and this length is f of x. So small r of x equals seven minus f of x. And that's essentially what your integral is gonna be set up as. So volume will be pi times integral from negative one to one. Again, large r of x squared is just four squared minus little r squared and again, Little r squared with this distance, which will be seven minus f of x. And it's only, I think you don't even have to write the function. I think you just write seven minus f of x for that. But make sure this entire thing is gonna be what's, what's gonna be squared, this entire expression here. And this whole thing will be dx. You don't have to evaluate it. They just want to see you can set it up. This is usually, again, the hard part of these problems. The integration part is supposed to be the easy part at this point. All right, in part C, we have another function, h of x. That's the vertical distance between the point x and f of x. And the horizontal line y equals 3. Find the rate of change of h of x with respect to x at x equals 2. All right, so h of x is the distance between the point x to f of x. And the horizontal line y equals three. So the distance on this graph, so let's pick a you know point at x f of x. Distance from here to here, that's what h of x will be. And so h of x is simply then in this line segment, you would get it by taking the distance from here to here, which is always three. That would be three always and subtracting the distance from here to here, this part. And this segment is just f. So h of x is just three minus f of x. So h of x equals three minus f of x. So writing what f of x is equal to, we're given that it's equal to six over one plus x squared. And we wanna find the rate of change of h of x with respect to x at x equals two. So we just find the derivative of h, which is h prime of x. So then this falls away, we find the derivative of this, which is just the quotient rule. You can think of it as a quotient rule. Um, yeah, so then, um, See what we got here. The bottom function, the bottom function squared. On top, you'll have the derivative of the bottom, which will be 2x, keeping the top constant, minus the derivative of the top, which is just 0 times 1 plus x squared, which won't matter because you're multiplying by 0. So this falls away. So then we just plug in 2 to get h prime of 2. which will be two times two, four times six, 
four times six is 24. One plus two squared, one plus four. So then we get five squared. So our answer is 24 over 25. Bang, there you go, there's your answer. All right, so there, there's your answer. Let me know if that, um, that's you know, a satisfactory explanation. And any comments, feedback is always um, you know, welcome. So good luck, I hope that helps.